Hello, in today's tutorial we're going to turn this into this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or even this. As always we're going to need a fusion comp, so make sure your effects slide is turned on. Go to effects grab a fusion comp and drag it onto your timeline. We will now select and jump into fusion. So we will move our media out, out of the way so that we've got lots of room to work with a fast noise node. That's it, that's all you need, just the one. So at the minute if you put your fast noise into your viewer you get your typical fast noise kind of look. So for the first several examples, i.e. the circle, cross, square, etc., we're going to drop the detail right down and go into the color tab. We're going to change type from two color to gradient and then we're going to pick one of our gradients so linear will give the straight lines, reflect will give the lines going into or out of the middle, square as it says, cross as it says, and radial will give you circle. So I think we will go with cross. So at the minute, the point, the start point of your gradient is over on the left and the end point of your gradient is over on the right. We need to bring the start point into the middle. The easiest way to do that is to come over to your inspector where you've got start you want your x value to be 0.5 so double click and simply type 0.5 so we now have our start point in the middle and you can see the vague outline of your cross next we're going to bring our gradient so that it basically isn't a gradient you'll have a colour at one end and a colour at the other and they'll butt in the middle. Simply drag your sliders in and you're looking for 0.5 on both or thereabouts until you've got a nice crisp line. The easiest way of doing it is actually to again use your value box here so select one of your points double click 0.5 and then select your other little arrow, double click, 0.5 and that gives you a nice clean edge. At the minute it doesn't look very impressive, nothing's happening so we need to animate it. So the way we're going to animate it is we're going to use the offset and the repeat functions in your inspector. So we set the repeat to ping pong and now we're going to need to animate our offset and on a very basic level bring your playhead to zero set a keyframe bring your playhead to the end and change this value for now I'm going to use 5 but you can use whatever value you want the higher the value the quicker the animation is going to be so once we've got it animated, if we press play, you'll see that we get one nice cross coming in and out. That might be the effect you want, I don't know. If you want more crosses, you simply come to the end point in your inspector. You remember we said that the end of your gradient is here on the right. If we go to end X and drag it that we're bringing our end point nearer and nearer to the middle and you'll notice as we get to the middle we start getting more and more crosses and that's basically it now a couple of niceties if you like we can change the color now because your two points are one on top of the other you're gonna to have to move one of them so drag and you notice that we've moved in the white one, so we want to keep the white one over to the right. Now you can access both points and pick two colours that you want. 
You can be as subtle or as leery as you want with this. So we'll go with a nice red and bring it down a bit so it's a bit paler. And for our second colour, I think we'll go, so click your second point for a nice green. Just have them nice and brain mangling. And again, you can bring it down to get the colours you want, really. And you can make these as pale as you want. If you want them quite pale, quite subtle, if you're using it as a background for text or something, you can bring it right down. And you have that effect. Now, this is all very well and good, but at the minute, this will only run for the length that you originally had your fusion compact, so for me it's eight seconds. You might want it to run for longer. So you either have to set your comp up at the start, or if we come back into fusion, we can make it responsive. The way we make it responsive is we set an expression on an offset. So if you right click on offset, remove the fusion one offset animation right click again and click expression now in this little box here if we type open brackets time divided by comp dot render and notice the capital R and the capital E close brackets times and we stick with five And we get exactly the same animation, but what we do now have is if we come into the edit page, we can drag this to whatever length we want, and the animation, well it would if I'd connected it to the media out anyway, the animation will run for as long as your fusion comp lasts. So that's to make it across. If you come into your list, you can change your patterns to any of these as you so desire. So that's the basic geometric shape one. The other one was the sort of random squiggly pattern. To achieve the random squiggly pattern, you can keep your animation bits down here and if you come up to the top and change gradient to uni now you've still got your same colours which don't seem to do very much at the minute but if you come back into the noise tab put your detail back up now you're starting to get a pattern it goes in and out so the way you stop that is you grab your contrast and you simply start to bring your contrast up to get the desired effect and there you have your randomly generated blobby background one last kind of little extra if you like this expression at the minute if you want to change the speed you have to come back into the expression and change this number which in and of itself isn't particularly difficult but it's just a bit of a tedium if you make it a negative number by the way it will send the animation the other way so if you don't want to do that if you want to get all fancy we can add another control that will be used to control the speed of the animation and we do that by coming into our node right click edit controls and we will name this control speed oh, if I can type speed it's a number it will be on the color tab so it'll be on this tab at the bottom it will have a default value of 5 and you can set the range to whatever you want um, I'm 
going to go with minus 20 to 20 and I'm going to give it a slide control and I'm going to set the center to zero and click OK. So now if you notice down the bottom we've got this new control. Now we need to get the offset expression to read this control so we simply come in, delete the minus 5 or whatever number you had there and type speed. And now it's reading this here. So whatever position you have this slider at will dictate how your animation behaves. And this would come in handy if you were to sort of make this into a little macro or something so you could just um, publish the speed value and then people don't need to worry about the offset and the ping pong. That's it. I say it's a bit of a fancy one today. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, CB Super has a really complex background generator, but this is just a really basic and simple way of doing it. Cheers.